And welcome back. This is Balascuba with more random games. We're going to be doing another browser game today. This is Irrational Redux. We're going to be tossing a tail of twisted logic. We've already got an optical illusion for the little symbol here. It's the, uh, the duck rabbit. And hopefully you guys have seen that and you know what I'm talking about because I've disabled the mouse button because I'll get in the way. You guys uh, can't see anything I'm pointing at, but it's a duck if you look at it one way and a rabbit if you look at it the other way. Let's go ahead and get this started. Okay. Irrational is a game not so much about finding the right answer as knowing why that answer is right. Because of that, you might find that sometimes the answer you think you is right isn't. In each level, you'll be given logical arguments or propositional calculus if you're feeling flashy. It's your job to select the missing lines and complete the puzzle. It's your job to prove your rationality. <laughs> I'm rational, I swear. Here's an example. If you are a rational human being, then you will have no problems with this game. You are a rational being, therefore you will have no problems with this game. It's a very slow way of arguing, but it's how the pros do it, I guess. In this example, line one tells us there's a logical connection between rational humans and game playing. Line two tells us we are indeed dealing with a rational human being. Line three concludes that because of the nature of the player. Line two fits the connection. Line one. Line one's conclusion is true. You will be good at the game. I am good at the game, I swear. Remember the hints are there to guide you through the game, so don't be afraid to use them if you're stuck. Good luck. I shouldn't need to use the hints, though. I think. Therefore, I am. Very good way to start this game. Straight into philosophy with Descartes. As certainties go, knowing that you're some kind of thinking thing, some kind of living, thinking thing, isn't exactly helpful. Knowing it's bloody dark doesn't get you much further. Can I remember where I am? You try to remember where you are, but you recall nothing. The cold metal floor beneath you suggests that you've not been here long. It's possible, of course, that you've only just been born, but lying face down in the dark, you're forced to accept that given your propensity for the English language and non-fetal sta state, it's far more likely you've just forgotten how you got here. I don't know how, why they spelled fetal that way. I assume it's British or Australian something. Failing to find attractive alternatives, you decide to hum yourself a happy tune. Eventually, happy though it is, your attention is drawn to a lone glowing red thing. Rising gingerly to your feet, you totter over to find it's an LED attached to a light switch. Easy though you are, you can just about form the thought process that lifts your finger to the wall. I would like the lights to come on. If I would like the lights to come on, then I should press the switch. Therefore, I should press the switch. I could ask the brain, but I got it. I got it. True. My argument is valid. So let's move on. And we actually get graphics. Very nice. You fumble the switch in the darkness until your surroundings resemble something close to a dimly lit room. It's no great improvement, suffice to say it's small, empty, and with no obvious exit. You have entertained the idea of intricately examining the environment, scavenging for anything that might, by even the most elaborate stretches of logic, prove to be useful. You find yourself neither intricately minded, nor the slightest bit interested. This game does have a high, high level of vocabulary, doesn't it? We'll investigate the scrolling on the wall, though. You notice then a series of sentences etched into the wall in one corner. They seem to be f have been written in some kind of red viscous liquid, though for all the world you can't quite put your finger on what it might be. It's blood, isn't it? There's something very subtle bothering you about the scrawling's logic. Many people believe that a perfect God exists if many people believe that a perfect God exists and that belief is not an error, then a perfect God exists. If a perfect God exists, then he would not allow that belief to be an error. Assumption. Blank. Therefore, the belief is not an error. Many people believe that a perfect God exists and that belief is not, is not an error. Therefore, a perfect God exists. Now, the only thing that can fit in here, logically, is a perfect God exists. It's a cyclical argument. <laughs> this is not a valid argument, but that is the correct answer to what you are looking for here. You celebrate inwardly the argument ripped into metaphorical shreds by your razor-sharp deduction. It's circular. The assumption that's missing is the same as the conclusion. 
While you're impressed by your own prowess, it's uh, hardly told you anything more about your situation. Might as well still be in the dark. Before you can corner yourself into a circular argument, and before you can wonder how one can be cornered by a circle at all, your machinations are cut short by an urgent ticking and whirring. There are, these are exciting sounds, because they're the first sounds you can ever recall hearing. Somewhat exciting by default, then. It's a ticket? Taper? Is that what it's called? Ticket? Ticker tape. There we go. Ticker tape machine from within the wall before you extends what appears to be some kind of machine. This information doesn't blow you away. A closer expression turns out to be a ticker tape machine. From within the ticker tape machine spool reams of ticker tape coiling down and onto the floor. What? Whatever. For want of anything more, or even at all interesting to do, you examine the paper more closely. It reads. Do you think that's oxygen you're breathing? What? Assuming the laws of human biology haven't been broken? Yes, you do, rather. Prove that you are breathing oxygen. If I am alive, then the laws of human biology have not been broken, or I am breathing oxygen. Oh, wait. The laws of human biology have been broken, or I am breathing oxygen. I am alive, and the laws of human biology haven't changed, even though you misspelled it. Therefore, I am breathing oxygen. That is right, isn't it? There we go. Hooray! Logical arguments. I've passed this philosophy course before. I'm pretty sure I'm breathing oxygen, you say, to no one in particular. Contraption words back into life. Test one complete. Test two cued. Any questions? What the hell are you? Can you tell me what you are? No. I'm told this is not the answer you'd been looking for. It is, in fact, the exact opposite. Thought matter inactive. Subject thought process. Appropriate deductive reasoning. You consider narrowly. Deciding the laws of biology haven't magically been altered to be a triumph of reasoning. Negative. Triumph a significant or noteworthy achievement. Subjects deductive reasoning adequate. Damn you! I didn't even mess up yet. How dare you say I'm adequate? Gosh, thanks. Would you mind awfully telling me where I am? Test two, active. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. What can be deduced from this? Hey, you're not answering my questions. All right. If and only if Jack or Jill is ill then no one will fetch any water. If Jill has eaten her Weetabix, then she will not fall ill. No one has fetched any water. Jill has eaten her Weetabix. Therefore, Jill is not ill, but Jack is ill. Because there's no water, but Jill is healthy. Because she ate her Weetabix. I have no idea what the hell that is. But she ate it, and it made her healthy. Hooray! Again. So Jack's yakking in and Jill's A-OK. -okay. Easy. Test complete. Congratulations. You know, I usually like to accept my congratulations with a side order of let me the hell out of here. Prime directive. Assess problem solving ability. Humor. Irrelevant. Damn you. That was a good joke, actually. You find yourself becoming less and less fond of this machine. You still know nothing of your location, nor of the nature of your captors. Even your own identity is beyond you. Though you increasingly suspect a lengthy vocabulary and short temper are defining features. <laughs> Damn, this game knows me all too well. Tell me who you are. Tell me who I am. Let me go. Restate Prime Directive. Assess problem solving ability. Argument to the contrary? Impossible. That sounds remarkably like a challenge. You try to find a way around the machine's logic and can only find one rational conclusion. Is the machine's conclusion rational? If the prime directive is to assess me and the machine always follows its prime directive, then the machine must assess me. If the machine releases me, then it cannot assess me. The machine always follows its prime directive. The prime directive is to assess me, therefore the machine cannot release me, therefore no wait. The machine must assess me, therefore 
This machine cannot release me. Damn you, I will logic my way out of this machine. So rationally speaking, there's no way for the machine to release you. Although this is a perfectly logical conclusion, it's not in the slightest bit the one you'd sought. Perhaps this whole logic thing is overrated. While it seems to be useful, it does nothing whatsoever for your mood. Motion plus logic is incompatible. Control yourself. I'm not sure I agree. Current subject to motion? Annoyance. Yes! <laughs> Let me out of here! I'd use a term starting with F and ending with off. I'd use the term FOF. But you're close enough. You take a few of what you hope are caustic strides away from the whirring tape as it pulls down onto the floor. Pay attention, pay attention, pay attention now! Hey, over here, why won't you be my friend? Hey, listen! Take him punitive measures! Punitive measures! Oh, okay, I'm paying attention. In answer to your question, friends don't tend to threaten one another with punitive measures. Thank you, subject. To improve motivation, the next test is from your politics. My politics? This probably isn't going to be good. Formulate an argument logically proving that Michael Atkinson is a douche. I don't know who that is. If... Uh... The Australian Attorney General? Michael Atkinson? I assume that's what that stands for. If he parks in disabled spaces, or Australian is wrong to, to ban video games, then he is a douche. There's no evidence that video games are more dangerous than films, therefore video games should be treated similarly to film, therefore Australia is wrong to ban 18 plus rated games, therefore Michael Atkinson is a douche. Okay, so I need to put in the if-then statements here. So, if... Let's see... If my collection parts in disabled spaces, uh, no, that's not something I can do. All right, let's do. If there is evidence that video games are, if there is not evidence that video games are more dangerous than films, then Australia is wrong to ban 18 plus video games. If video games, no. Oh, if video games should be true, then yes. Okay, hold on. I got this. I swear I do. I sometimes st skip steps in arguments. Okay, if there is not evidence that video games are more dangerous than films, then video games should be treated similarly to films. If video games should be treated similarly to films, then Australia is wrong to ban 18 plus video games. Hooray! Not skipping steps. I hate arguing this way, it's so slow. And that's why Michael Atkinson is a douche. I don't know who that guy is, but he sounds like a bad guy to me. Sufficient. You feel you're being undervalued here. You've come a long way, though you've established precisely sod all about who or where you are. You do at least know that Jack is ill and some Aussie you've never heard of possibly likes to park in disabled spaces. You think about that for a minute and decide to aim higher in the future. But what to aspire to? Clearly the machine expects you to aspire to rationality of godlike proportions, but you're not convinced such omniscience would be altogether fun. You're also unsure about the potential repercussions of aspiring towards the fictional. And so your mind, your human mind, drifts inevitably towards thoughts of escape. Of course, you still have remarkably little idea of just what it is you're, that you're escaping from. That probably wouldn't be good. Or escaping to. <laughs> Aww, it's a cute little bunny. <laughs> oh, jeez, that's not a bunny. Therefore, of whether or not it can be considered an escape at all. What the hell is that? <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Complete the argument and decide whether or not it is safe to escape. If and only if the machine will kill me if it, when it catches me, and there's a good chance I, am, I will be caught, should I then not try to escape? Either I am an escape artist of worldwide renown, or there is a good chance I will be caught. I am not an escape artist of worldwide renown, therefore, there is a good chance I will be caught. If the machine kills me when it catches me, then I will be a very sad bunny, and it will fail its mission to assess me. Therefore, the machine cannot fail in its mission. Therefore, the machine will not kill me when he catches me, because if he kills me, then he cannot complete his prime directive. Therefore, I should try to escape. Hooray! 
Perhaps an eternity spent in the small room with the machine for company wouldn't be so bad. You could sit in a different corner each day, but escape and survival are now the only topics which concern you. Concern unnecessary. Continue test cycle. Damn it! There's something about having your every thought read that just doesn't sink in. How can you escape if the machine knows every move you can make before you do? Escape impossible. My program is perfect and all-knowing. You can tell nothing from the stale, emotionless characters on the ticker tape, but you imagine at least a trace of smugness in the print. You wonder if that's a relevant clue. Is it a red herring? Does the machine even know what a red herring is? Do you? Yes, 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 probably. Did the machine just contradict itself? You're not sure, but you're convinced you can beat its logic. Okay, now this is, uh... The point at which uh, many people that do try to play this game get a little confused. Because, as you can see, damn near all of it is blank. <laughs> if the machine has contradicted itself, then the machine is not perfect. Uh, and then, therefore, the machine is not perfect. So I have to prove that it contradicted itself. So, the machine did say that the machine thought smugness was a red herring. And the machine thinks smugness is a relevant clue. If the machine thinks smugness is a red herring and thinks smugness is a relevant clue, because it, it just said smugness is two different things, then the machine has contradicted itself. Therefore, the machine has contradicted itself. The machine is not perfect. Hooray! So I'm pretty sure you've just contradicted yourself. For once, the machine is silent. <laughs> request for some further hoop jumping no abrasive remark just the faintest of words then tape begins to spill out once more accompanied by a subtle burning smell error error logical inconsistency yes i have outsmarted the machine emergency shut down error send problem report that doesn't do anything <laughs> has windows ever contacted anybody back saying hey remember that problem report that you sent us 10 years ago we finally fixed it no you never get anything in a normal circumstance you might think to yourself this is my chance as it turns out you can't quite recall what constitutes normal circumstances so you make a run for it anyway you break into a sprint not entirely sure what it's going to achieve in a small doorless room and are relieved when in a sea of sparks and grinding motors an opening opens in the wall ahead of you on the other side of the door christ how you love doors i don't like the looks of this this one sports an interface filled with strange symbols you like these sort of doors less so and this is basically the same thing that we've been doing this whole time uh, except this is a mathematical proof uh, in, in form um, just picture all these letters here as, as arguments that we've been doing this entire time uh, and here uh, you can see what the symbols mean on the right in the box. Uh, the first one, um, that little line there next to... Oh, jeez. I have forgotten so many of these, these names, to be honest with you. It's been years since I've done calculus. Uh, the backwards U, I'm just going to call it, because I forget what it's actually called. Uh, so that stays the same. So the little line with the little mark at the end there not means not uh, this time the uh, in the second line the triangle uh, with the line underneath means and in this one the V with the line underneath means or the arrow means an if then statement and this uh, I don't even know what you call it the line with the equal sign attached to it means therefore so uh, G if M, then G, then A. M, then A. Therefore, A. Yes. Whatever A is, is also true. M and A, therefore, not E. So we already know M is true. We already know A is true because of this one up here. Therefore, not E. E is not true. If O and V, then not E, or R. And it works both ways, that's what the arrows mean. So not E or R means O and V. So uh, O and V are both true. 
so oh hooray I have passed theoretical calculus I guess you could say <laughs> what the hell was that what the hell we did 11 out of 10 problems when the door opens, it is, considering what you've been through, something of a letdown. Beyond it is a second room of roughly equal dimensions to the ones to the one you've just come from. A slot in the far wall begins spewing paper. That does not look good. Congratulations, subject. Final test complete. You don't like where this is going. No, I don't. Status apologetic. Escape opportunity. Deception. I hate you. Test summary. Problem solving. Into indicative of at least partially sentient creature. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Partially sentient? I have been fully sentient since I downed that beer an hour ago. The hell's your problem? You're not sure whether you feel bashful or insulted. You said a lot ambivalent. <laughs> Subject demonstrates self-awareness, ability to learn. Basic to average intelligence. Damn you! How intelligent am I supposed to be? Conclusion, strong, rational, pa potential. Strong, rational, potential? Sure, why not? Counterpoint, priority statistic. Rational potential realization rate, 7%. 7%, screw you. Minimal. You're dimly aware of the gas that has seeped slowly into the room. Strongest motivation, no longer applicable. Strongest motivation, survival. And that looks like... That's going to do it. Your eyelids drift shut. You're surprised by how soft the ground feels as you fall. There's sure to be some significance to that, but you're too relaxed to really care. You think about death, in all honesty, you really needn't. You'll have empirical experience of it soon enough. Perhaps death will prove to be yet another adventure. Perhaps it will be endless nothingness. You decide, in the end, that both sound like fun. And that's the game! So, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I know it's a little bit different uh, than anything else that I've done before, especially after the, the very silly one that I did a, a couple videos ago, the Super Big Gun Adventure. Uh, but, I had a lot of fun doing this one, and hey, it keeps your mind sharp. It keeps your mind very sharp by doing this one. Uh, thanks for playing Irrational, and congratulations on beating the game. I'm not here to massage your ego. Ow. But it's worth pointing out that the challenges you've just completed are true propositional calculus. Though the maths is is hidden, the maths is hidden, until level 10, no corners have been cut, and this material forms the basis of every good philoso philosophy degree under the sun. Our rationality is the most fundamental tool we have. I hope you enjoyed using it. Have a good one. If you're interested in logical logic, critical thinking, or philosophy in general, there's a fantastic new resource at uh, that link, philosophy, I don't even know, what the hell is dot .hk? Uh, I know these post-game splashes screens are rubbish, but I'm afraid there's still going to be two more of them. Sorry, but they are very friendly splash screens, the sort you might take home to meet your mother. I'd love to hear your feedback, good or bad, but ideally grammatically correct-ish. Um, say hello at, uh, and then he gives his email address. So this one uh, was fun for me, I should say. Uh, there's an exclusive bonus screen with all new story extra, extra hard puzzle and super secret reward available to anyone who wish who donates any amount. So yeah, if you donate to him, he uh, will give you a special screen where you can do even more philosophical arguing. Uh, but I think that's actually going to do it. You can actually uh, click here after the after the game's over, so you can get the full walkthrough. <laughs> that's how I found a lot of people that were saying. Uh, that they had trouble with some of the arguments. But, like I said, this was a, a little different than what I, I normally do in, th in this slot, uh, but I had a lot of fun doing it. I usually enjoy uh, thinking games like this. Uh, so I hope you guys at least enjoyed watching me do it at least a little bit. If not, let me know, and I you know, won't do anything more like this. But that's going to do it for this. What is this? This is a part. I guess you could say it's a part. <laughs> it's another random video. But I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Hope you laughed. Hope you learned. Hope to see you next time. Thanks for watching.